In this video, I'm going to show you a new feature in the beta for Photoshop that e-learning designer developers could really use. Okay, so I think we've all been there before when we've asked our stakeholders for photographs or images, whatever, for your e-learning course and what you get sent is less than ideal. Maybe it's got, you know, extra things in the image, people walking through the frame, or perhaps it's just not a wide enough field of view or simply too small to be used in the dimensions of the e-learning course that you have selected for this particular project. So we're going to talk today a little bit about a feature called generative fill, which is a new feature that's available in the beta for Adobe Photoshop. And you can get this right now if you are a Creative Cloud subscriber. Okay, right now there is a beta for Photoshop. If you open up your Creative Cloud desktop app, you'll see it uh, under beta apps over here on the left-hand panel. And I've already gone ahead and installed it. This is the Photoshop beta. Now there's a feature that I'm very interested in, and it is called Generative Fill. Now, Generative Fill uses uh, AI technology to basically do what would be a lot of work in older versions of Photoshop. Let me go ahead and open the application up. And I'm going to start off with a photo that I took myself a while ago. And uh, its aspect ratio, its dimensions are, I believe, four by three or something in that range there. And I've received photos from my stakeholders that they want to include in e-learning, but they just don't measure up size-wise. Perhaps you want something that's a wider shot, or perhaps, you know, you just simply need something that's wider than what I've got here. So I'm going to go ahead and use the crop tool not to reduce the size, but rather to increase the size. I'm going to press the C key to open up my crop capability here. Now, a lot of my e-learning courses are 1470 by 900. Now, I could certainly reduce the size of this image to fit, you know, a particular e-learning course. But maybe I want something, like I said, wider, or maybe I want, you know, a greater field of view. And one of the things with crop is that you can actually say, well, I want this to be larger. So let's go larger that way. And I'm going to use my marquee tool to select this white area here and just go a little bit into the image itself. Now you'll notice that this context bar, if you will, uh, shows up and there's this feature called generative fill. If I click on that, I can do one of two things. I can either just press generate, which is what I'm going to do in this case, or I could put some words in there to have it use AI and those keywords to generate more to this image. Let's just hit generate and see what happens. Now I should point out that this is a beta version of Photoshop. So a couple of things to think about is that you can run this generative fill feature. Uh, and it, of course, it's using some of the power behind uh, Adobe Stock. So it's pulling images from Adobe Stock to use uh, you know, all of this information that the, uh, that the system has to extrapolate basically images that weren't there in the first place. So it's really kind of cool technology here. Let's, uh, let's keep expanding this and see how far we can go. So I'm going to, in this case here, I'm going to take it out this way a little bit here. Let's take it out to say about there. And again, I can use my marquee tool to select this upper area here. Hold down my shift key to expand that to the stuff on the right hand side here as well. And we'll use the generative fill again and see what we get. Like how far can we really take this? And we'll go ahead and press generate. But as I was saying, this is a beta feature. And right now, you know, you're probably going to be allotted a certain number of generative fills 
uh, per month if you are a subscriber of the Creative Cloud. Right now it's unlimited, but uh, wow, that looks really good. If you're not entirely happy with it, which I am, I think that looks amazing. There are variations that you can choose from. So it generates a bunch of choices. That one's not bad as well. Uh, I think I like the first one, but you know, you can experiment with whatever works for your particular layout there. I like the tree in, in this one here. Again, I can keep going. You know, it's almost like I, I'm going back in time to when I took this photograph and, uh, you know, just continuing to put on wider and wider lenses. Let's take it uh, a little bit further. In fact, maybe what we can do is uh, kind of go a little more extreme this time, something like that. And again, we'll use the marquee tool to select the areas that are outside of the original image here. I'll hold down my shift key to select some other areas here. And there we go. So let's try generative fill again. But uh, certainly while the beta is going on, this is a great feature to play around with, especially if your client has sent you a photograph that they wish to use in e-learning that just doesn't cover the size of your e-learning project or you would just like a wider field of view here. So that's pretty amazing. And if I unselect the, uh, the layers that are involved here, let's take a look at this. So the original image was just this. And what we did with uh, generative fill is we created a much wider shot that includes some really neat stuff. Obviously I've been to this location cause I'm the one who took the photo, but you know, clearly Adobe has relied on Again, that AI technology to fill in uh, the stuff that wasn't there for them in the original photo. Let's take a look at another example. So here's an example of a photograph I took. I was really just one of those right moment, right times. It's a humpback whale breaching, uh, not fully breaching, but breaking the surface of the water. And there's, you know, some people in the background there. They kind of look like they're in the water, but they're actually not. But I can get rid of those. If I just want the image of the humpback whale breaking out of the water, I can use my lasso tool to just quickly draw around this. Now, of course, the ability to remove an object from Photoshop isn't really new. You know, it's not a new feature, but it is something that does take a little bit of time to do correctly. Um, it probably would be easier with this photo, but certainly images where there's complex backgrounds, um, you know, would be more difficult, but literally a click of a button here. If I just generate this with that selected, it should replace it with just the water. That looks perfect to me. Again, like before, we're given some variations. If you're not quite sure about the layout of the water, I kind of like this middle one. That's, that's kind of nice. So now I have really the photo that I wanted was just the humpback whale and not the tourist in the background. Let's look at it from a different perspective now. So this image here was, you know, it's a beautiful shot, but I always sort of imagined, wouldn't it be cool if there was something right here on the edge of this island? And so maybe that's something that generative fill can help us with here. So I'm going to just select this area here. And once we have that, we'll click on generative fill. And in this case here, I'm just going to add the word lighthouse and we'll see what happens here. Now this feature I imagine is probably relying on a little bit more of the Adobe stock feature. So somewhere out there is a photograph of a lighthouse. And again, we've got some variations here that, you know, look pretty good. I kind of like this third one because it seems to meld well with the, the land that's there. It might be a little bit too large. So I could always undo that simply by unselecting the layer. And this time I'll use my marquee tool, but I'll make it a little bit of a smaller 
selection there and we'll try it again this time we'll type in lighthouse and i'll hit generate it should be a little bit smaller lighthouse this time that's cool i think that's a little more subtle and again you'll have some choices that you can toggle through yeah i kind of like the second one it just seems a little bit more natural so we can expand the field of view as we saw we can take stuff away we can put stuff into photos that didn't exist otherwise. Here's one of my favorite photos, and this is just straight up with my old DSL. The thing I, that always bothered me was that I wanted to be able to crop this, but I really liked just the layout of everything, but I didn't want to see this life preserver and part of the building over here. So I'd like to try um, the generative uh, fill here and maybe just use a regular marquee tool and just select this area here because I'm not happy with that. And we'll just do generative fill. I'll leave it blank as well. And we'll just generate that and see what we get. You know, and it's not uncommon for your stakeholder who's asked you to build some e-learning to send you an image that maybe contains something you don't want to show, whether it's a person walking through the scene or whether it's an object that seems out of place, you know, you've got now a much more natural. So this could literally be a deserted island now, no signs of civilization at all. And, you know, if you weren't happy with what was going on in the sky, of course, Adobe Photoshop has had, you know, replaced sky, but now you can kind of do that with uh, generative fill as well. So if I'm looking for some interesting cloud structures, I can just use, again, my lasso tool, use generative fill and type in the word clouds and generate and we'll see what we get here. Not really crazy about that one, but let's try one of the variations. That's nice. That kind of fits in keeping more with uh, you know, what's on the, uh, the shot there already. Again, if I wasn't entirely satisfied, I could always press generate again over in the uh, properties uh, inspector over here and we'll see what options we get this time around. We've got a few choices now. So you can just go through and pick the one that makes the most sense. I kind of like that one there. That's pretty cool. But my advice right now, if you are a Photoshop user and you're in a situation where what you've received from your clients image wise is not quite up to your expectation, definitely install this beta and use it while you have unlimited uh, generative fills. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one on one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.